Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Beams. In our last episode we had the renowned multi-hole designer Tony Granger explain to us the difference between weight and displacement. In this next episode Tony delves into things a little bit deeper and explains a couple of the different performance ratios. So we've spoken about the difference between weight and displacement. Now can you tell us how we can use the displacement or the weight to determine the characteristics of a boat's performance. To do that, what we really want to know is the weight. Um, if we've just got a figure that says displacement, we don't really know for sure if that's the actual weight of the boat. It may have just been the figure the designer started out with okay. uh, to, to start the design work, or it could be just a figure that's being thrown onto the sales brochure and it may have been underestimated to make the boat look as though it's light and therefore a high performance boat. Okay. So, so we need to know that we're working with a realistic estimate of the weight of the boat. Um, once we know that, then we can use these two formulas to assess the potential performance of the boat. Right. One of them is the power to weight ratio uh, the other one is the displacement to length ratio. Right. Now, the power to weight ratio, that's, that's how much sail we've got relative to the weight of the boat. And that gives us an idea of our potential performance up to the point where we need to start reefing. Right. Okay. So we measure the sail area in square meters. We use the area of the mainsail and the area of the fore triangle. Right. Not the actual sails, because uh, there's so much difference between different types of boats. We need uh, a common factor to make the comparison. Right. Any of these formulas will only give us potential performance, okay. because there's a lot of other factors that we can't measure uh, that come into it. Right. Like skill, skill of the crew, for example. Yeah. We can't write a formula for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the other formula we can use is the uh, displacement to length ratio and that tells us uh, the length of the hulls relative to the weight of the boat and that tells us how easily driven the boat is. Okay. So a boat with nice long skinny hulls for, uh, for a given weight is more easily driven than a shorter hull for the same weight. Okay. It will also have better motion at right. sea. And this plays into the performance as well, because if you're pitching a lot, you've got disturbed airflow over your sails, mm. more turbulence, and you're losing efficiency. Okay. Yeah. So, can you tell us where, you know, if, if I'm looking to find the weight of a boat, where would the best place for, for me to look be? The best place is a measurement that's been the boat's actually been weighed. Okay, yeah. And a good resource for this is is the OMR ratings. Okay, yep. That you can find on the website of the Multi Hull Yacht Club of Queensland. Yep. Uh, there's, I, I think there's over a hundred boats listed. Yep. And all of those, all of those uh, weights are official measurements hmm. that have been taken by an official measurer. Yep. And there's a wide range of boats there, not just racing boats, a lot of cruising boats, fast right. cruising boats. And whatever kind of boat you've got, you can almost certainly find a similar boat in amongst those boats. Right, okay. The other way you can assess the performance, assess the weight, is to look at how the boat's sitting on its lines. Right. Now, if you come across a cruising cat and the transoms are 100, 150 millimetres under the water yeah. and the wing deck clearance looks like it's a bit lower than you expected, yeah. you can be pretty sure that that boat's overweight. Right. Okay. And once we have these numbers, how is there anywhere online we can go with these numbers and uh, input them to find out? Absolutely. Um, if, if you just go to a Google search, yeah. uh, punch it, well, the power to weight ratio, that's very easy to do yourself because there's only two figures. Yep, yep, true. Um, the displacement to length ratio is a little bit more complicated and it's written in imperial numbers, so you need to convert your metric figures to imperial. Yeah. Or you can do that 
online. There's equations online that will do that automatically for you. Okay, great. We'll put some more information in the description of the video, which will help you uh, work out those numbers a little bit easier. And uh, once again, Tony, thanks a lot for your time. My pleasure, Jason. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> now, that was fantastic. Thanks a lot for that explanation, Tony. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, then you'll be notified for when we upload uh, our next videos. And uh, all the best, everyone, and fair winds. Thanks for watching.